welcome to our Circuit City Week. I am so excited that we are gonna make circuits to build our own city this week, which was planned last time in our school year of science, but it's now in our Circuit City of Science, our summer of circuits. So this week, I'm gonna go over what we're gonna make. We're gonna make a fun little car that you can drive around your city because everybody needs a little bit of transportation. I'm a little disappointed in my yellow LEDs here, so I'm actually going to do white today for my headlights because these guys are a little, they're not as bright as I'd like. But if you live in a city, you obviously need a little house. Maybe it's a townhouse, maybe it's an apartment house, maybe you have a house house, but you probably want light in it. So we're going to make a fun little house and we'll make a place for you to go to work so you can go work in a building with lots of fun windows. And then of course, if we're going to navigate the city safely, we need a stoplight, so we'll have a little stoplight that can work for us. And we can direct traffic like that. And you can make multiples of these by printing out multiples of PDFs and wiring them up. A lot of them are gonna be really easy for you guys to learn. We're gonna do the traffic light on Thursday. That's gonna be a little trickier. And then Friday, we'll make a fun hero in our city that we can make with our little circuit character cards. So I'm gonna go over what you guys need for this week and all summer to do all of our projects with us, and then we'll get to how we make it. The first thing you'll always need is our printouts. You wanna use something like, you know, a thicker cardstock that you can use. It gives it just a nice stability and structure to your projects so that you can use them a little bit longer, and that's always nice. You need some scissors to cut out your templates. You're gonna need something to poke holes with, a hole puncher maybe, I have just like a sharpened piece of wood or you might have like a little metal skewer stick. That'll all work perfectly. You need something to power your circuit. So you need some sort of energy source and that is the battery. We use CR2032 batteries, the little coin cell batteries. Um, and these guys will work. They need to be three volts for them to work with our LEDs. You're gonna need some LEDs. I have a color pack, but maybe you have rainbow ones or you have specific colors, that's all great. I have little three millimeter LEDs and you might have five millimeters and those will work too for you. So don't even worry about that. And then you need some copper tape. So this is conductive tape. It allows us to add electrons on a highway to create that circuit. And you can find that at garden stores is copper tape. And then you need some sort of non-conductive tape. So a masking tape like this, a scotch tape like that, any of those will work that you will be able to sort of separate your highways together. And that I think is all that we need. So I would love to get to our shout outs and see who we have with us today. Who's joining us? Let's see. We... It's a little smaller in the summer because I think people are doing it. 9 a.m. We're I, not all up by then. I think you're right. <laughs> yeah, based on the YouTube video views. Mm -hmm. We're not a week. Later. Yeah. Uh, but we have our favorite Los Angeles person. <gasps> Naomi! Naomi! Hello! Naomi, I'm so glad you're here with, with us because this is the week that you wanted to do. And I'm really happy that we're making it happen. I know it was a disappointment at the end of the school year, but it's here. It's here. It's here. So I hope you're happy. Yay! Uh, and it looks like Naomi's the only one who woke up this morning. Oh, so, I know. It's hard to get out of bed. People had a good weekend. I do know that Rohan comes and watches us in the afternoon. So, hello, Rohan. How and are you? Hopefully, Venetia. And Venetia. After camp. After, like, what's apparently going to be the world's best camp day. I hope she had a great first day, Venetia. And if you come, I want to say hello. And if you watch later and you're like, man, I really wish Dr. Erica would say hello to me, even though I'm not on and awake at 9 a.m., you can always email us, and we will let you know. We'll give you a hello. Wait a second. Wait a second. We have a special visitor <gasps> from outer space. Her last name's Gupta. Oh, Kaya! Kaya! Hi, Kaya! Oh, Kaya, I hope you had a good little vacation. They went camping, I heard. I heard mm. they had some adventures, camping is which good. is amazing. Camping is good. Also, I'm excited now. I'm super excited for our Zoom afterwards. We'll have Naomi and Kaya. We'll get to hang out together. It's, it'll be a ridiculous amazing. party. Amazing. Yeah. And for our families, if you don't want your kids watching on Facebook or YouTube, you can always send them to our Zoom room, which has our live feed. Kids can ask questions, and Evan will read them out to me. And you can get that at our um, at our website, patreon.com slash Research. And then that, you also get all of these guys emailed into your inbox. It makes it super easy to do lots of circuits. Alrighty. Well, Ganjo. Not Gupta Ganjo. That's her last name. Yeah. Crazy. Not, 
what did it say Kupta? Um, I'm not sure. Sorry, Kaya. So the first thing that we're going to do with all of our paper circuits is we are going to cut out around our thick black lines. And you'll notice there's a couple thick black lines here that we're also going to cut. That's going to make little folding tabs for us, okay? And then after we cut out around those thick black lines, you're going to fold on these dotted lines right here. All right, and by folding before we add stuff into our circuit, it helps make the circuit that we do lay down stay a little bit more robust and it doesn't break nearly as easily. So the first thing we'll do is we are going to cut out around these thick black lines. We got Johnny Good and Sam Ooh, here. Oh, hello, Johnny and Sam. It's good to see you boys. I bet Rachel will love having a bunch of these made for her. Yeah, you Not that you boys wouldn't love to also make an awesome Circuit City. I just see Rachel like taking it over. Like Rachel Zilla. <laughs> I can totally see that With happening. Massive copper straights. Yes. I heard that she got into the copper tape. Uh, Sam was... is going to try and make a Lamborghini. <gasps> Super cool. That might need some extra awesome decoration I love that. Skills. I mean, I think the hardest part of the Lamborghini is going to be getting the side profile of your car a little better. Because ours is clearly a van. Far cry from a cool Lamborghini. However, I can show you a couple of tricks that you can do. Alright, so I'm going to cut in onto these black lines to make these tabs. Just like that. Alright, now if you're making a Lamborghini, you might want to draw out sort of like a outline to your car. Let me grab a pencil. And you would want it to match like I'm going to do a very poor Lamborghini here. It's really going to be more like a Honda Civic. Making it a Lamborghini is all you, Sam. You might want to try but and you would, just make the box of the Lamborghini first and see how right. it folds. But you could also bubble it. Now, if you're going to bubble it all the way back down here, you might just have to move this line of copper tape down. So you can make the car bubble like this. And then you don't actually, you probably don't need this tab, you'll probably just get another skinny piece of paper afterwards, right? And then whatever this height is, is like the height of your Lamborghini trunk. And then you would have this be the same. Ooh, I'm just realizing this is in pencil. Can we see that? Uh, it's not ideal. Okay. But we can see it a little bit. Hang on, let me. Do you need me to print another one? No, that's okay. There is a bus template here as well, so if you don't want to make a car, you can also make a bus. Yeah, so if you wanted to make more of a bubbly car, not necessarily a Lamborghini, you would cut like this. And then this would sort of cut all the way over here. Like that, and then you would do that same. It would need to be symmetrical for it to line up. Like this. That will give your car sort of like a bubble piece. It won't allow you to fold it up into a box. But what you can do is then cut another strip of paper, and your paper, you'll just tape it in along the folds. If you want to make like a more legit Lamborghini, you're going to have to maybe find a printout and then just use some of the basic circuit skills to wire up the um, headlights in that. And John's got plenty of those basic circuit yes, skills. Yes, John is like a circuit master. All right, so we did cut this out, and now we want to um, fold everything. So it's sort of ready to be folded up in its final state. I always like to fold towards my circuit paper so, so that it's gonna, the fold I'm making covers up some of the stuff that you see as the template. Because we wanna hide that template. So all of these guys actually just fold down like that. And you'll be able to see how this is gonna fold into a nice little box. Because when we fold these back up, I've got this line here and I can fold just like that. And we're gonna keep folding it. Like that. We got one more right here. Let's see, we gotta get those little tabs out of the way to fold it really nicely. And then our last fold is on this battery piece, which will be our switch flap. And you can see how this is going to end up sort of folding together into a little box van. 
But again, if you had done, um, if you had done like the car, right, you would have cut, ooh, that's a very bumpy car. You would have cut something like this. It's a Jetson car. And then you wouldn't have any of the top pieces. You would have to get your own paper to make the top pieces for something like that. And then you could add like a cool spoiler or something, which would be amazing. All right, so the other thing we need to do first is we also need to punch a hole for our headlights. All right, because headlights, we really need them to shine brightly out instead of being behind the paper. So you can take something like a pencil. I've got this like little metal guy you can punch a hole with. And if you feel like you wanna make it, I find sometimes it's easier to get a hole started with metal. And then you can take, I have like this just like wood dowel that I put a, through a pencil sharpener. And then you can just make a bigger hole by pressing that down. So now I have two holes that are gonna fit my LEDs. And that lets my headlights shine much more brightly than if it were behind the paper for us. All right, and then we are going to get up our Curious George and we're gonna get wiring. We are starting off nice and simple this week. We don't even need to add tape on top of any of the rails like we have in some of our past projects. It's not too much bending. So if this is your first time, I know that all the people watching that we have online right now have done this, but if this is your first time joining us this afternoon, I wanna show you a couple tricks about copper tape to really make sure you're successful. Because paper circuits, there's a lot that can go wrong and it can be really frustrating when it does. So one thing is, is you always wanna get your copper tape started and that's to get the actual piece of copper tape separated from that white backing that you have. Once it's started, you wanna start putting it right down onto the paper and taping it right along wherever you might be going, just like that. You wanna sort of peel this backing and stick it. Because what happens if you don't, if you're like, I'm gonna get my nice piece of tape and you peel it off, one, sometimes when you peel it off, you'll notice I left some on there, it got really skinny at the end, that's not great. Also, this is now like completely unusable. It's all stuck together. It's twisted up, it's different lengths, like different thicknesses. That's not very useful. So never peel it all the way off unless it's a really short piece, all right? That is one really big trick with making your paper circuits work. Because the more you handle the copper tape, the less sticky it gets, and it doesn't want to stay on your paper, and then it can get really hard. So once you get started again, you've got those two pieces. So the side that was sort of facing the white, that's our sticky side. So we're gonna put it sticky side down right on the template and make sure that like I want my piece of copper tape to go this way. So I wanna make sure that when I stick it down, the copper tape is heading in that direction. I don't wanna stick my copper tape down like that because then I'm kind of going the wrong way. So you wanna stick it down in the direction that you're going, just like that. You always wanna make sure you sort of make sure you start right around. Don't, don't start your copper tape down here when the template goes all the way to there, because that's gonna make it a little trickier to get those legs attached. And then the other trick with paper circuits is you never rip them around corners. So right now I'm about to turn it coming down. I don't wanna rip it here and start a new piece of tape, because what happens is I have one highway for the electrons, and then I ripped it and I have a different highway, and those electrons can't get from one highway to the other. So it's better for me to just bend the highway the way I want to. And the way you can do that is you give yourself a little extra. You don't have to peel it all the way off because remember then it gets a little squiggly. But give yourself some extra and then just press it down somewhere further down the line where you want it to be. This is like a big bumple wave that we don't really like but what you can do is you can just press it down like that. And then you can use the back of your thumb to really press down that copper tape. All right, and you do wanna make sure that this one ends inside that green circle because that's where we're gonna put our battery at, and we need it to touch the bottom of the battery. So if we just barely get into the green circle, it won't make very good contact. So you wanna make sure you're all the way in that circle. And then we are going to tape up our next piece. It's just like this. And again, I'm gonna stick it down. I wanna go that way, so I'm gonna stick it down so my copper tape is sort of in that direction already. And I'm gonna peel and stick. And when I get to this corner, I'm gonna give myself some extra space and I'm going to just press it down further on down. 
And I have this big wave, but I'm not worried about it because I can just press that down whenever I want. And again, now I've got to go straight down. So I'll give myself a little extra and I'll just press it down further down. So I'm not trying to press right at that where it turns. And then I can just backtrack and press that down. All right, there we go. So now I have my two pieces of copper tape which is fantastic. And then let's just see, we're gonna tape in our LEDs next, I believe. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our LEDs through. Choose the kind of LED that you want your headlights to be. I'm gonna go for white this time. I was a little bit disappointed with the yellow. I wanted it to be a little brighter. And one trick you can do with white LEDs, if you have Sharpies at home, is you can actually Sharpie over the outside and it will change the color of your LED for you. So that's kind of cool if you have a color that you really want that you can't find. Sometimes with certain colors, it's really hard. Greens, I feel like, never turn out actually green. Before we put these in our circuit, we want to make sure two things. We want to make sure that our LEDs work and that our batteries work. And the way we can do that is we can test them. So you need to have one leg on each side of the battery. You need to have... For example, right now I'm about to have one leg on this side of the battery and one leg on the bottom. So I have one on the top, one on the bottom. The top of the battery is like the one that sort of comes over the edge. It looks like it's like a little bit wider. It's the one that has the writing on it. The bottom of the battery is sort of like polka dotty. But you'll notice, Dr. Erica, I have my battery slid through those little legs. One leg's on each side, it's not lighting up. And that is because LEDs are one-way streets. So the electrons can't go through the LED in a certain direction. And when electrons go through the LED, they kind of slide down and they have so much fun that they say yippee and then you see all the light of their little yippies. But if you put the slide the wrong way, they're never gonna climb up the slide. So what you gotta do is you have to sometimes flip it around. And you'll notice that once I flipped it around, my LED lit up. That's very good. This LED works and this battery works. But our car has two headlights. So we wanna make sure our battery can power two of whatever LED you're using. So two red LEDs, two white LEDs, two rainbow LEDs, whatever you're choosing, you wanna make sure it can light both of those LEDs up at the same time. All right, and that's important because if like, let's say you chose one red and one white, and I can even show you this, it wouldn't have actually worked for me. This battery cannot power one red and one white. It's really quite peculiar. All right, so in that sense, you always wanna check with the LEDs you're planning on using, all right? So we've got two white LEDs. They both light up, which is perfect, and that means I'm ready to wire it up. So what I'm gonna do, on the top one, it says the short leg, and if you look at your LED, there's a shorter leg and then a slightly longer leg. So the shorter leg is gonna touch this piece of copper tape, this rail, and the long leg is gonna touch this piece of copper tape, or that rail. So what you can do is you can actually take your LEDs, make sure you know where's the long and the short, and you can make them do the splits. I'm gonna make my LED do the splits, just like this. And then I'm gonna poke my LED through the paper. I'm gonna just press it in. And I could tape it down so that those legs are going straight across. I always find it's a little bit better there we go. If I bend the leg also, so if I take this long leg, instead of letting it go straight down, if instead I bend it, kind of like an L, then it goes along the copper tape right there, and that usually helps your circuits do a little better. It's not absolutely necessary. Your circuits will work without doing that. Sometimes it just helps make them work a little bit better, and sometimes that's what we need. We just need that little bit of extra help to make it work. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a piece of tape and you are gonna tape in this LED. When you tape it though, we need to leave this part of the copper rails empty because we're gonna put another LED there. So just be thoughtful, don't, you don't wanna tape it like this so that you can't tape in the other one. I like to tape straight across the LED, that's fine because this is non-conductive tape. And then I also like to press nice and hard on top of those legs. You really want them sticking down and touching that copper tape. That's really important. If they don't touch very well, you're not gonna have a completed circuit. All right, and then we'll do the same thing for this one. We're gonna make it do the splits, just like this. 
And I already know that it's going to need to like sort of bend the legs a little. So I'm going to bend them into like little tiny L's. Just like that. And now I can push this LED in. Get it all the way in, just like the other one. And now we can also, again, tape down this piece. My leg doesn't cross this dotted line, and that's really helpful because that means I don't have to bend it later. And sometimes when we bend the legs, we pop them off the copper tape, which might break your circuit. So that's something to be thoughtful about is that your legs want to stay on the inside of that piece right there. And if you find, oh man, but I bent it, it's too long, you can always snip them shorter to make that work. And we're going to take another piece of scotch tape or masking tape, any sort of non-conducting tape, and we are again going to press those guys down. And now we're going to put in our battery. So our battery always goes on top of that green circle. And we always put it in so we can see the letters. So when it's in, I can look at it and I can say, oh, this is positive, it's a CR2032. If you put it in upside down, our circuit's gonna be backwards, remember, because our LEDs are those one-way streets. So if I put it in backwards, my LEDs won't light up. And we can check that by just doing that. And we can check, it doesn't work. But I can flip it over like that. I can see my letters. And then when I flip that little tab up, which is my switch, my LEDs light up, which is great news. That's exactly what I want. My car headlights are on. But you might be like, Dr. Erica, this is a little frustrating every time it sort of slips around. So what we can do to fix that is you can take a little piece of tape and tape in the edges. So I like to actually cut my tape sort of in half to make it skinnier. And then you want to make sure that you don't tape over the top. Because to complete the circuit, I need the copper tape to touch the bottom, I need this copper tape to touch the top. If I put this masking tape over the top, it's not gonna light up because the masking tape is blocking the battery. So you always wanna go on just the edges. As tiny of an edge as you can go is usually the best. And what I find is that if you sort of like put it down a little bit, you can actually press it in against sort of the thickness of the battery and then you can put it down. It makes almost like a little pocket, which is really handy. So I have one of my battery pieces like that. This stays just enough. I mean, you don't even need a second piece, but if you wanted one, you can add a second piece like this. And again, just on that edge, and then you can press sort of against the battery, and that will do it for you. You do want to make sure you don't cover up this part with tape. And even here, I'm going to like smush this piece out of the way. And I'm just going to smush it down just a little further back, just like that. And then I can double check that I didn't screw anything up when I added the battery and I put the tape over. So I, that checks to make sure, okay, I'm still getting contact between the two. So they should be checking their circuit to make sure it looks like yours right now. Yes, you always want to check. And once your circuit works, whatever you do, if you add tape, you check it. If you add another piece of tape, you want to check it. When we fold it up, we'll check it. You just keep checking it to make sure because it's a lot easier to troubleshoot it if I ended up taping my battery in and I say I taped it in like this, right? And then I check it. I'm like, oh man, that doesn't work anymore, but it did before it was taped in. And that tells me whatever I just did broke my circuit. And that helps you be like, oh, that's what it was. Or maybe I put my tape and it was down here and then I check it and it's like, oh, it's still not working. Why not? And you can be like, oh, but this was the last piece of tape I put in, and that wire I need to touch the top. So that really helps you troubleshoot what you're doing. Now, in terms of keeping this always on, there's a few different ways you can use for switches, and I actually have them here. So this one is using two little magnets. So there's a magnet on the inside and a magnet on the outside, So and it will just naturally stick to the battery. And that gives it enough pressure to be on without me having to actually physically press it. Can you show That's one again? option. So yeah, I have a little magnet on the outside of the battery. And I don't know if Evan can get in there, but there's a magnet on the inside. So it's sort of like the two magnets are smooshing the paper between the battery, which is pretending like my fingers are pinching it. So I just have one here and one down there, and they press on it to make it on. It kind of looks like a car, a car door handle. It does kind of look like a car door handle. That's really cool, actually. I love that. 
And you can put it on the other side too because the magnets will go through paper just fine. So if you have some little magnets, that's one way. And I did that here on the house too. Again, I've got a magnet on the top and a magnet on the bottom. And you'll notice that if I take one of them off, my house goes out. So you just sort of got to find the right spot with the magnets. Sometimes that can be a little trickier with the magnets. They don't press as hard, but they do work and they're sort of a fun way to work where they're not so in view if you want things hidden. Another thing you could do is you could use these fun little sewing clips. These sewing clips, they can just clip right around your battery and it'll turn on the little lights in your building. And that's a way for you to have it without you having to press it. And if you don't have those sewing clips, you could actually use a binder clip. Now this one's not always on even with the binder clip because we want to be able to change from like green to yellow. So this one's like got sort of a two part button. And if you wanted, you could have it be like always green and I could take maybe a sewing clip here and I could press it on the green and it would be always green. And I could press it on the yellow or I could do the same with the red. So that allows you to play with your Circuit City and not actually have to touch them. Or if you want, you can also just play with your car and pinch it like this. That's fine. Or sometimes it'll work if you take a piece of tape and tape over it. But the nice thing is you always want an easy way to turn your circuit off because otherwise you waste your battery, right? So we want to make sure that we don't waste our battery. So I could just also sort of tape this and it will stay on too. All right, so that's another way that you can do it. The tape doesn't work nearly as well as the clips, but it does work a little bit. And then now that it's all wired up, what we can do is we can fold it into the car. So I like to put the little short flaps, flaps on the bottom and then the longer guys go on top, just like this. And then you're gonna tape areas. Now before you tape, I would decorate because if you tape the top part here, you're not gonna be able to use markers on top. It's always a different color than if it is on paper. That might bother you. Like for example, I put a sunroof on mine because I think it'd be fun in like the hot summer sun to put that down and wave my hands through that. You only need a couple pieces of tape to get this taped together whenever you are ready. You just fold it up like that box and you tape along the top piece just like that. And then you wanna tape along this edge right there. So just take another little piece of tape like this. I find it's always easier to put it on one side first and stick it down there and then fold it over. So put it in the spot we want it to be and fold it over. And then I have my little car. If you wanted, you could put a piece there, but I have my little car. Now, of course, I don't have wheels but I do have wheels on this cutout, so you could cut your circular wheels out and decorate them and then you can put them on your car and you have a little car to drive. And if you're Sam, maybe you have a little like Lamborghini to drive around. That you will definitely need separate pieces of paper. Taping and cutting and maybe even some gluing will be required to make that like truly have different cool angles and curves and stuff. But if you're just going for a cool little van to get the family around to soccer practice, this one will work. And there's also, in the same template, it's the same way to wire the circuit. You'll even notice the copper rails look almost identical. This one is a little bit bigger and longer, so it'll make like a bus for you, which will be really fun if you want to bus some people around town. You can make a few cars so that you can park them in all of your little driveways, which will be really fun. All right, we are gonna head over into our Zoom room and make sure that everybody who is with us in Zoom gets a project that's working today. If you haven't gone into our Zoom room, you can get all the information on how to get there at patreon.com slash rosyresearch. And with that comes live daily science with new circuits all summer long, or most of the summer long, unless we take a little break. Um, and it's as little as a dollar a week, $4 a month, which is a cup of coffee super easy and there's no pressure. You can do it at 9 a.m. with us or you can do it any other time in the day, which is awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We will see you tomorrow as we continue to build up our circuit city to play with and have a lot of fun with. We'll see you guys later. Bye.